Hi, I'm Vicky. I'm glad you're here. Today I have a fish and a wish card for you. It's hand painted, hand stamped, and it has metallic finish, which doesn't really show in these still shots. You can see my little metallic paint and my little dew drops, which are crystal clear water droplets. These are the materials that I used. I use Daniel Smith paints, but you can also use inexpensive watercolor paints and these pearlized paints, which are really pretty. Look at the pretty colors in those. These are from Semco and I bought these from my local dollar store and these paints are by Micador. Look at the pretty colors in these. These are great beginner watercolor sets. They're very inexpensive. I bought mine from Big W. But today I'm going to use my Daniel Smith watercolors and my professional pearlescent paints. Now I have my palette ready to go and I have my paper cut to eight inches by eight inches, scored down the middle. And I have my ZQ tape or my ZQ tape and I'm taping off just a very narrow border for this card. So the border is about one eighth of an inch, between one eighth of an inch and one quarter of an inch. And you're going to see how easy it is to paint the background. So I'm using my sable brush. It's a round brush but you could use a water brush and some brush tip markers or some watercolor markers or you could even use Crayola watercolor paints with this which are also a very economical alternative. Now I'm getting my colors ready I'm choosing some nice blues. This first blue I've chosen is Cerulean Blue Chromium from Daniel Smith and I'm going to start by drawing a line from one edge to the other and I'm changing the thickness of the line just by releasing some of the tension on my brush using thinner and thicker strokes but one continual line and I'm using it until the paint is virtually gone from my brush so I don't have to be going back into my water jar and collecting water on my paintbrush. I'm really just using the paint that's there and when that's run out, I go back and choose another color. You don't want this too watery and you don't want it too pigmented either. You can see how that's getting quite light and that's exactly what I want. Now I'm bringing in this beautiful color which is cobalt turquoise, which is a lovely viridian blue green color. And you can see I'm not bothering to keep my lines super straight. I'm just painting them so that there is a white space between each color. And now this yummy color is called undersea green, which is very appropriate considering that this is an undersea card. Now I'm going right over the tape on the top and bottom and side to side so that I can peel it off after I've dried it and you'll see it has a really gorgeous little border on it. Now this couldn't be easier painting and it's also good practice for you to do some wavy lines in different colors. Now I'm using my bone folder just to flatten that out. You can see how the border really makes it look as though you've taken a great deal of care with this piece. I'm going to be using Versafine Onyx Black Ink and I'm going to be using the stamp set from Stampin' Up! called A Fish and a Wish. I'm using these three fish here. And you'll notice if you turn the stamp set upside down, you can use the fish going in the opposite direction. So I'm going to do that with my fish. I'm going to have some facing this way and some facing the other way. And the sentiment I'm using is a sea of thanks. I am going to use a stamp positioner for this or a stamping platform since I'm using watercolour paper. And I'm going to set up the stamps now. You'll notice when you get a new stamp set from Stampin' Up that it has this plastic coated white paper on the back. 
This paper makes fabulous masks for your stamps. So keep that in your stamp set, don't throw it away. I find that I use these masks very often. So I've got my three fish, now I'm looking for the sentiment, a sea of thanks, there it is. And I'm going to line these up with my card. So I'll put my card right down the bottom, put the magnets on and then position the fish where I think they're going to look good. So you can play around with this, have them going in whatever direction you like. I like them facing each other, so three facing right and then the ones on the other side facing left. Now I was going to put the sentiment at the top, but I changed my mind. I decided it would look better right in the center of the card. So I'm lining up with the grid lines so that that is perfectly straight and stamping with the Versafine Onyx Black Ink. And I like to use a cloth just to go over the stamps. And that looks great. So now I'm going to reposition the fish And put them facing the other way but in a different order so I have the small fish right at the bottom and I've put them in a different order as well so you can see I've changed that stamp set from being a set of three fish to now being a set of six now I'm adding some more paint around the fish in a halo so that they'll integrate into the background better and I'm using the same paint that was on my palette and I'm using different colors where the colors differ in the background so i'm using cerulean blue down the bottom this time and that nice viridian color up the top and just changing it up so that they don't have exactly the same colors in the background as i'm painting onto the fish and that makes it look really interesting And you can see that my colours are not too watery and not too heavily pigmented. So this is called wet on dry because the background is dry already. And you can see I'm not being too careful about getting the paint exactly where I want it to be. I want it to look loose and free. Now I'm bringing in this lovely green pearlescent paint. I purchased this professional set of pearlescent paints on Amazon. And just dabbing it over the top of each of the fish. And staying within the lines. Drying it off. Now you might be able to see some of the shimmer already. They look just like fish that have come out of the ocean. They're so shiny. <laughs> now I have these fabulous little clear dewdrop water droplets that I purchased from Amazon. So they are 700 pieces clear dewdrop water droplets embellishments, dewdrop simulation embellishments, embellishments, that's a hard word, round clear water drop. And they were $14.24 Australian, which I think is a very good price. And I'm just going to open them up and show you how varied the sizes are. They go from quite large to teeny, teeny, tiny. Look at those tiny little ones. And they are beautiful. They're beautiful clear water droplets. I plan on using these on some floral cards as well because they'll look just like dew drops. Now, if you don't have these, um, I have some alternatives for you. And I'll talk about those once I've glued all these on. But I have several other methods that you could use to create this dewdrop effect or the water bubble effect. So I have some fine tip glue to adhere these little clear droplets.
So doesn't that look pretty? It looks just like little bubbles. Now, here are some of the alternatives that I would suggest you give a try. I really like this Viva Glass Effect Glue. And it's probably my favourite alternative. It gives a really nice, clear water drop effect. And it's easier to apply than putting these little water drops on individually. It doesn't look quite as fabulous, but you can see how they dry really clear. Now, the other alternative I suggest is the Clear Nouveau Drops. And they're quite good as well. I don't think they're as firm as the Glass Effect by Viva. They're still a good alternative though. And then I always like to flick on the back because that helps remove any air bubbles that might be there. Now I also have some coloured Nouveau Drops. So if you wanted blue bubbles, I guess you could use something that worked that way too. So that's my Nouveau Drops. And I have those in lots of colours. So you can see they do stand up quite nicely. They give a nice rounded shape, which is good. And you can also use liquid pearls. I find with liquid pearls, they're great. They make lovely little bumpy shapes, but you'll see if I put them against the blue, they dry white rather than clear. They're still a good option though. I'm just going to give that a flick so that I don't get any air bubbles in it. So there's your options. If you don't have these lovely clear water droplets, you can see how they stand up. They're quite dimensional. So there's your card done. I love how this turned out. You can see some of the shimmer there. They look like fish that have just jumped out of the ocean and onto this card. <laughs> I really like it. And I love the fact that it is hand painted watercolour and hand stamped and that I have used the stamps in a different way to the way they were intended by turning some of them upside down. I really hope you enjoyed today's project. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider doing so, so you won't miss any more videos. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.